So just to, as way of introduction for the people that I don't know here, my name is Tara. Um, I'm the founder of a company called Simple Day. What we do is we help companies that want to implement Monday. Um, some companies that come to us are brand new to Monday and they've never used it and they need help with either a custom implementation or help with templates or some questions they have. And other people that come to us have been using Monday for a while and either they didn't set it up properly to start with or they, um, or they just need help. They want to add an enhancement or you know upgrade or something like that. Um, so that's just a little bit about what we do. We also have some templates that we sell and we do live trainings to help people learn how to master Monday. I've been working with Monday since 2015. So I'm a total, um, totally obsessed with Monday. I think it's an amazing tool. And I think um, I'd love to hear a little bit from everyone here what your experience is with Monday, um, but I think it's a, a really an, a great tool that can help transform your business. And that's some of the things that we're gonna talk about today, how you can essentially um, be smarter without having to work harder. And Monday is the tool to help, to help us do that. So before we get started, I'd love if people maybe could just mention in the chat quickly um, what their experience level is with Monday, just so I can get a sense of everyone who, who's here. Um, some people I know, the people that I know in the who's joining the webinar, um, first of all, nice to see all of you, but I kind of have a sense from you guys, but um, anyone else, I'd love if you could just leave a quick comment so I could just get a sense of if you're totally new to Monday or it's something that you've been um, using for a while. So we'll just take a minute for those comments to come in. Okay, so I see some people with a lot of skill here in Monday. Um, and I guess for those who didn't answer, we'll <laughs> leave it at that. <laughs> okay, um, so basically what we're gonna talk about today is how you can use Monday to work smarter and not work harder. As I started off, I think Monday is a great tool to help you run your business. And it really doesn't matter what your business is. I've worked with a lot of different verticals, a lot of different businesses, and I see the same trends time and time again about how people need to use Monday and how people are actually using Monday. So I want to start just talking about time. I've been, I actually have a business coach that I work with. And one of the things that we've been discussing, and it's something that's been on my mind, is how someone work, how someone organizes their time. Like if you're working in a business, how do you manage that time within your business? So there's three kinds of time. I'm not, I'm only going to focus on one, but just so we see the full picture. The first time kinds of time is monetized time, like what you're doing that is actually bringing in money for your company. So if you're selling something, if you're on the phone with a client, that's actually monetized time where you know this is causing a direct result of me bringing in revenue for the client. The second time type of time is non-monetized time. So it's things that you need to do to run your business, but it's actually not monetized so um you know it could be it really could be anything that is not directly bringing in revenue but you need to do like let's say um you know let's think of an example like let's say you need to send out a contract to someone okay it may be the, the act of actually sending out the contract is not something that's like monetized but it's something that that's part of your business that you need to do the last time allocation is strategic time now, strategic time is time where you're spent building your business, thinking about your business and how to run your business more efficiently and how you can reach those goals of where you want to take your business. And I think part of the goal of this webinar is I want you to take that strategic time because every single business, no matter what business, needs strategic time in order to grow. You need that strategic time to constantly be thinking about your business, where your business is going and how to make it better. And one of the things to make it better is to become more efficient. And what we're gonna talk about is how you can become more efficient running your business within Monday. So with that, um, I am going to share my screen. Can everyone see my screen? 
Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I have this. I'm only on one computer today. Um, okay. So here we actually spoke about time, um, and I'm going to start about um, just about how to work smarter. So at the end of this webinar, I think we're going to come out with. Some, I mean, I know we're going to come out with some actionable items that you can use to work smarter, and this new mindset is going to help you um, have more of have tasks that you can manage within your company that you're going to know where everything is know when the due dates are and i think one of the biggest things that i hear is that um people tasks fall through the cracks like people don't know what they need to do when something is due and i think building a system and having a system within monday that allows you to manage those tasks is is going to change your mindset about how you work. And that's really the whole goal, what we wanna do, what we wanna do here. I think things will, you'll have more transparency into what you need to do. Uh, your communication within your team and the tasks that need to be done will be better and you're not gonna lose tasks or things are not gonna fall through the, the cracks. I just wanna um, give you some real life examples of things that, um, that I've done to make my business more efficient. And in the end, it saves me time. So I don't know how many people here are, are familiar with Calendarly. That's the, that's the top logo here. Um, Calendarly is a tool that you can use to book your, a, a tool that you can use to book meetings. So in my business, I have a call to action on my website where people can book meetings. And I found that people would book meetings, but then I don't have those leads entered into Monday. So I, I, I actually hired someone like an assistant that could enter those leads into Monday. So that way I had that information in Monday, but it just seemed so inefficient. So basically what, what we did is we, we, we created an automation using a third party tool, which I'll get to. And we created an automation that automatically, whenever anyone signs up for a calendarly meeting, it's automatically entered into Monday. So this was a great example how we were just working smarter. We had the information that we needed automatically entered into Monday. And because of the way we set it up, I don't know if you're familiar with Calendarly, but within Calendarly, you can have different meeting types. So we actually had different meeting types from different sources. So I knew depending on which meeting someone signed up for, I knew what their source was and where they were coming from. So I had this information pulled in from um, using a third party tool and it went right into Monday. So that's just one example of how I was able to work smarter, saving time, um, and just became more efficient because I know that the information is automatically there. Another example is Zoom. So I don't know if you, um, if anyone here uses Zoom, but I try to record all of my calls that I have with my client on Zoom because it's, sometimes you need to look back at them. Like you need to understand like, okay, what are the tasks that they gave me? Or, you know, you wanna review something, whatever it is. So what I used to do is I used to have these Zoom calls, download the recording and then upload them to Monday to associate them with my meeting or with my, with my tasks. And I realized that I never did that because, okay, it probably takes like three minutes to do it. It's not a big deal. But when you have five or six meetings in a row, then like the next day, all of a sudden you're like, wait, when am I, like I forgot to upload my meetings. And then people on my team didn't have those recordings that they need. So once again, um, we, we basically figured out a way that there's an integration with Monday and Zoom where we were automatically able to integrate those meetings with Monday. So as soon as I have a meeting with a client, it automatically creates a task within Monday. And then at the end of the call, it, uploads the um, the recording right there. So again, this wasn't something that took a long time, but I definitely forgot about it all the time. So I've never uploaded it. And it's, it's just another example of ways that we were able to work smarter and not necessarily harder and have better results. Any questions so far? No? Okay. Okay, so let's move on. So what I wanna focus on today is I wanna talk about the task board. Now, this is, this is gonna be the first of the main strategy that we're gonna talk about, about how you can work smarter and not harder. 
one of the biggest mistakes that I see, and I don't know, I see that um, some people here that are also um, Monday consultants with me. Um, one of the biggest things that I see is that when someone sets up Monday boards, they set up a lot of boards. So I'll give you an example. If you, let's say, have a consulting business and you have 10 clients, I see people set up 10 client boards. So that means that you have 10 different boards per client. Or if you have 10 projects, they set up 10 projects for all of those, 10 different boards for all of those projects as opposed to one board. I think the task board within Monday is like the place where you should be working probably 90% of your time when you're in Monday. We can talk about other reasons why you would have other boards not that you should just have one board in Monday, but I think the task board is the biggest place where there's room for um, to increase efficiency. So I want to show you, um, can you see my screen now, a Monday board? Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming uh, yes. Um, uh, Tara, we, uh, oh. we only see Canva screens. So okay, just let me change it. One second, share something else. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you guys should be able to see my, to see my screen here. So this is a, an example. Um, this is actually a product that we sell. It's called organizer pro. It has different, it's different templates that, and I'll get to it later, but basically that can help a business, um, run using Monday. And you basically have every single thing that you need for a business, but I want to start on this task board. Now, no matter what vertical you're working in, and and I've worked with a lot of different verticals, everyone needs a place to manage their tasks. It doesn't matter if you're, you are creating contracts or if you need to call people or set appointments or actually do things for your clients or for your business. It doesn't matter if you need to send out an order or, um, I don't know, call someone to ask them something. It really... Honestly, it doesn't matter what it is because most things are just tasks. I find, you know, the, the biggest thing that people need to manage within Monday is tasks. So here's an example of a task board. Um, the way that I norm, I, there's two ways that I do it. Some ways um, I usually have like an open tasks and a completed tasks, like really, really straightforward, simple, easy. You have your tasks that you need to do and your tasks that are completed. In some cases, and this is actually how I work within my company, is I need to track tasks by month. So I would actually have this group, instead of saying completed tasks, it would be um, April completed tasks. And then I would have March completed tasks. So I can see all the completed tasks within the month. So we're working on our task board here. We have the different groups of tasks, okay? Now, one sec, let me just go back to, um, okay. Can you see the, the presentation now? So I just wanna talk about some key columns that are on this board that you need to have in order to have an effective task board. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip this, these two columns right now. One of the most important columns that you need is a due date column. Due dates are really, really important because they allow you to see when things are due. If not, this is just another way that things fall through the cracks because people don't know when things are due. So it needs to be part of your company culture that you make sure that everyone works with due dates. Now, I don't, you know, I, I've seen people not work with due dates and basically, like I said, things just fall through the cracks. So I definitely recommending figuring out a way to make this part of your company culture, but every single task should have a due date. Now, one thing that I want to point out about the date column, if you see here, there's these little icons and this is called deadline mode. So if you click on the settings, um, so I'm actually on deadline mode, so I would click remove and then I can add it back. But these settings show you these little icons, which is kind of just like a nice visual way to show you where things are holding um, in terms of when the due date is. And I'll show you another reason why we need this deadline mode once we get to filters. So the first key column that you need is a due date. Everything should have a due date. The next thing that I want, that I think every column needs, and I'm gonna show you this video. Um, I'm gonna start with this video of my daughter actually 
randomly taken, not for the purpose of this of this uh, webinar. Um, and then we'll we'll get into this. So let's start here. Okay, so that video, that was my daughter. And as you can see, <laughs> she's very cute, but um, she just named all of the toys that she was playing with. And I think this is something that that I also see a lot that people don't have a naming convention. What a naming convention means is how you call items or things. It doesn't. You can have a naming convention about anything. So if you don't understand the roles of people within your company and how you name things, you're going to have a hard time. Like I'll give you an example. Um, this board that I this task board that I use. So you could see that there's a rocket ship emoji. Every single task board that I use, I use a rocket ship just because I think it's easy to, to find it. Like I'm a very visual person. So I see colors and images or emojis before I'll see, before I see text. So I always put a rocket ship. So one of my clients, she said to me, she's like, oh yeah, we're always working on the rocket ship board. Like that's what we work on. But the point is that you need to have a naming convention. You need to understand what, what things are called either what boards are called, what tasks are called, what whatever thing we're talking about, you need to have some kind of naming convention. Now with that, so um, I set up this, this naming convention, I'll call it called Batman and Robin. This is a system that I've used for, since I started Monday, probably for since 2015. And the concept is, I don't know if you saw the really old Batman and Robin cartoons. This is kind of what it looked like. Um, pretty old school, but what happened, what would happen is Batman was the guy in charge and he was like, Oh, I'm Batman. Look at me do all of these things. And he was responsible for everything. But at the end of the day, if you watch the videos, Robin was really the person that was actually doing the work. So this naming convention came up because we would have someone that was responsible. In this case, we had like a project manager, like they needed to talk to the client. They were responsible for the task but they weren't necessarily doing the task. So we would have the other person, like the doer that was doing it. And we never had like a good way to call people. So we, we came up with this system and it would be like Batman's the person in charge of the task and Robin's the person doing the task. So it just made a really easy way for us to be like, oh, you're the Batman on the task, you're the Robin. And right away, everyone knows their roles. I've seen so many companies struggle with this and they're like, well, I'm the organizer or I'm the supervisor and you're the manager and you're this and and they don't have a naming convention. I think Batman and Robin is an easy way to follow it, but use whatever works. The point is make sure that you have some kind of naming convention so everyone understands what their roles are. It's just really important so people know this is what I need to do and this is what you need to do. And then one of the things that I have on this task board which works really well is we have this interplay between Batman and Robin. Like, let's say I am done with my task so I can mark it as Batman review. Now, when Batman comes to look at this board, so this is Rosa, Rosa's like, oh, I have to review this task. She also gets a notification through an automation, but- uh, Tara, can you just uh, switch window to oh, the task uh, board? Okay. Okay, sorry, can okay. you see now? Yes. Thanks. Okay, so you can see here, I changed this task to Batman review. And what's gonna happen is Rosa's gonna get a notification saying, I have something to review, or she's gonna look at this board and seeing, see that she has something to do. And the same way we have a Robin review. So you can have this interplay between your Batman and Robin. Um, so on two levels, it's helpful. Number one, it's the naming convention, assigning roles, knowing who's responsible for what. If you don't lose things, you, you, it's very clear. Okay, you're responsible for this and I'm responsible for that. You know your roles. So I think one, another strategy is to make sure that you know exactly who, what your role is. You want to use Batman and Robin? Great. Use it. I think it works well. You have other words that you can use to describe the different people. Great. Go for it. But the fact that you have the names to easily describe this people, these people, plus you have the statuses, make, creates a situation where things don't fall through the cracks. 
Any questions so far on the things I've covered? No? Okay. <laughs> okay. So the next thing that... Um... I have one quick one, Tara. Sure, go for it. Um, what if you don't have a Batman and you're just the Robin and you have to handle it all and make it nice for a Batman that's not involved? What do you do? Well, do they need to see the tasks? No. <laughs> so then you're, no, you're no. So then you, necessarily, you don't really need a Batman and Robin in that case because you're just the Robin of everything. That that that's that's the that's the real truth. You but you do have to figure out. I would try and figure out in your case if there's a way that they can see some key information, so that way you don't need to always be telling them that. Correct. Correct. Yeah, dashboard or something like that. Yeah, you can use dashboard. But the truth is, yeah, you can. You actually can assign them as a Batman, and then they can just search for Batman. So that way you don't need to tell them, but they'll know the tasks that are assigned to them, to them to like review yeah. and, and then they'll have them there. Great. Thank so, you. So that way you don't waste that time. Pleasure. Yeah. Okay. So back here. Okay. The next thing that I want to talk about is views. And this is something that I think people don't necessarily know about within Monday and they don't take enough advantage about it. This is kind of coupled with the idea of having one task board. Again, just think, doesn't matter how many clients you're managing, doesn't matter how many projects, if they're all tasks and similar type of things, I think you can manage them in one task board. Now, some task boards can get very long. I have a client that they, and literally they have 250 columns on, on their boards, which is, really really hard to manage and the reason that having one board works is because you have the ability to create different views within monday so here i'm going to show you um two kinds of views that that i use that are i find really helpful if you're working with this batman and robin um kinds of setup. So I actually create a view for Batman and you can see like this is, and I use something called the dynamic me. I just want to make sure you guys know what the dynamic me means. Dynamic me is whoever the person that's signing into Monday, they're going to be assigned. So let's say Rosa is signing in, whatever she's the Batman through this filter, she's going to see. But if I'm signing in, it's going to be me. So what that creates a situation is where you don't have to have a view up here for each person. Cause I see a lot of people just having a view per person. You don't need that. If you have this, if you use this dynamic me, you don't need to do that. So basically what I've set up is views. And I, just to make sure everyone's familiar, there's a quick view where you can just click on something or you can have an advanced filter. So I have this advanced filter basically where Batman is assigned to me. So I see everything that's on my plate that I need to look at. Now, if I would come in here, I could see like, look, Rose is still working on this. It's not due till the 20th. We still have time. I don't need to worry about anything. So that's my Batman view. Then I have my Robin view. Okay, now I have my Robin view. Now here you can see, um, I actually did something um, where I changed the groups. I don't know if you noticed, it's a feature called group by. Unfortunately, it's not um, available on all accounts. Although Monday says that they are coming out with it to be available on all accounts. There is a trick to get this added to your account. So if you want, you can um, let me know later and I'll, and I'll teach you the trick. But what group by does is it changes the group. So if you notice, remember before we had open tasks and completed tasks. Now that I went to my Robin view, I did today, it changed to today and yesterday. Okay, so what I'm essentially doing in this view, first of all, I'm filtering only the things where I'm the Robin because it's, remember, we may have everything. We may have 10 people or 50 people working on this board, but I'm only focused on what I need to look at. I don't need to look at everything else. And I am also filtering where I'm the Robin. Oh, I set it up before, but I see that it didn't stick um i want where due date is overdue and today i find this to be the most helpful view to look at um first of all the 
picking overdue and today is because I use this deadline mode. So make sure that you, you check that out. But basically my goal is when someone's working with Monday is that they can come in and they can be like, what do I need to do today? What are my tasks to do today? I don't really care about the tasks that are due in three months from now or next week or whatever it is. I want to know what I need to do today. So when you have this one single task board, it does get overwhelming because there's a lot of information there, but with views specifically, what do I need to do today? And what's on my plate? I don't care what's on other, other people's plates. I can see just what I need to do today, but I also want to see what's overdue because if you didn't do, if you didn't do anything that does fall through the cracks. So the goal is by pulling in the overdue information also, you, things don't fall through the cracks because you have everything here. If you want to get fancy, um, you can also set up automations then like each day renew the, up, the due date. So it like moves to the next day. So you won't, another way that you won't lose, won't lose everything, but basically all the information is there. And my daily view allows you to see that. Now you could see a second option. If you're not working with Robin, this Batman and Robin, and you have like one people's column, like, like Connie was saying, you can have my daily view which it's really the same filters um sorry over here it's really the same filters i did the robin but if you have one people column so you would just do if person is the dynamic me and the due date is over day over due and today now you can change this like let's say you want to see you know what's due this week so you can add your tasks and you can see here it just added something that's due on april 19th so i have a view of what's due on my week some people work in be better in a daily view and some people work better in a you know weekly view Re it really depends on your workflow but the point is that i'm not looking at the main table like this okay this is not such a full board obviously but i'm not looking at the main table i'm looking at specifically what i need to do today and i think this is one of the key strategies and the key takeaways that i want you to have you should know what do i need to do every single day i don't not that I don't care about anything else, but I just need to focus on what I need to do. And I think this is one way that just allows you to work smarter and not harder because you're not sorting through all the tasks and where everything is. It's so simple. You come here, I can see what do I need to do as Batman? I switch to here. What do I need to do as Robin today or what's overdue? And depending if you're like in that Batman position or that Robin position, and sometimes you could be both you easily see this information. Any questions up till now? Oh God, yes, I just have one more. I'm sorry to Don't monopolize, I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> Don't know, so, no need to apologize. <laughs> so if you're in that weekly view and let's say you've got 10 clients, so not necessarily tasks, but you have clients, you need to show those clients. How do you show all of the clients and then the tasks you need to do for those clients? Okay, so what I would recommend in that case is remember this group by that I was showing you? Yes. So you can group by um, a status column. So if you see here, I just changed it. Okay, so here's a client, you could change this to client, but here I have everything that I need to do for project one, project two, project three, it's all in different groups. And then on top of that, you can filter the date. So that way it'll be very clear, the groups, which are your clients, and then you have the different days. So the, the, different, um, the different board? tasks that you have. What? So it's on one board, one board. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, you have to just take advantage, like play with the filters. There's really a lot that you can filter and I find switching between boards is annoying. Like I don't want to constantly be switching between boards. I would, that, that's what I, I think. He, I think you keep everything on one board unless it's a different workflow. Like let's say you're doing billing within Monday that obviously should not be in your task board. That's a totally different workflow. Um, but things that are the same workflow, I think should all be, and tasks, we're talking about tasks should all be yeah. in one board. Very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Like, I'll give you another example of, of an automation that I set up. Um, so we have a CRM and within our CRM, we have automated contracts. So we send out a contract through Monday when someone wants to sign with us. And when the contract comes and it's an e-signature through an app, 
So when someone signs the contract, it comes into our CRM board, it marks it as completed. And then, okay, it automates a few other things like sending it to a billing board and moves it in the CRM. But what it does, it, it creates all of my onboarding tasks in my task board. So I have all of those onboarding tasks right there in the task board and it's all automated. Like I don't need to do anything to, to pull it up. It just shows up. Um, so that's like another example of how I use this one board. It's still tasks. Yes, it's onboarding. So you can use a status column to just change the type, but the concept is that it's still, it's still tasks. Okay. So let's, any other questions before we move on? Okay. The next thing that I want to show you is um, a formula column. Now, um, you could see on this board, so this task board, there's also time tracking on it. And you can see that there is time tracking for like actual time spent per task. And there's also a column of estimated time. Oh, this I see this is empty. There's also a column of estimated time. Now, in some positions, it's really important for you to know did did this task take more time or less time than you want sometimes you need it because you need to tell the client sometimes you want it for internal for your billing but another trick that that i've used is a formula column and you can see here without me having to calculate okay this this we actually spent two hours and our estimated time is one hour so without actually having to calculate because the number may not matter i just have this auto, this formula that says this is under time and this is over time now, just to show you how it works, let's just say I would change this to four hours. Now you can see that this says that we're still under time. So this is another strategy that you can use to help you um, see in a quick, easy and efficient manner where all of your tasks are holding in terms of time. If this is something that you need to, that you need to take into account, but formulas are amazing. Um, and one trick for people who are not so good at formulas, like myself, I'm not great at formulas, but if you click over here, Monday has a formula builder, um, an AI builder. So make sure to check that out. If you are not great at formulas and have ideas of type of formulas, you literally can use formulas for practically everything within Monday. And at a quick glance, it shows you exactly what you need to see or what you need you know, when something's, whatever you want. There, I've, I've had so many different um, use cases for formulas, but I definitely recommend checking them out to make things more efficient because you have these columns on your board, like use them. I don't know if you've seen, but Monday in the, in the automation, in the column center, if you just click here on this plus button, one sec, I have to make my screen smaller. Um, so if you click on this plus and you go to more columns, if you've checked out the column center, there's so many different kinds of columns that you can use to help save time. Like one example that I'm thinking of right now is there's, um, one called, um, the world clock. So I can set a world clock. Like if you work with people internationally, you can set the world clock and then you can see what time it is in their time zone. I don't know about you, but I spend tons and tons of time just calculating like what time it is for someone else. So that's another example of ways that you can use Monday to work smarter and not necessarily harder because the information's there. Uh, yeah, Dominice, I think, is am I pronouncing it right? You have a question? Yes. Yes, um, you pronounced it right. Thank you. Uh, how did you get to the world? That stood out to me because I have a few people in different time zones. Can you go back over where you did that? Yeah, got to correct. It? Yeah, yeah. So if you click the plus button to add a new column, and then you click more columns, and you could just search here for wor world clock, and I can add it to the board, and I'll show you what it looks like. Let me just make this a little bigger. Okay, hold on. So here you could see that I added this world clock column and I can choose what time zone here. It's like a task. So you may want to do it based on client, but I can choose, you know, what time zone. So here, this person's on Pacific where it's 738 and here's someone's on mountain time where it's 838. So you can have that within your board. And it's kind of cute if you choose um, one that's like, uh, sorry, I'm getting lost here. Um, um, London, I'm not sure here, London. 
So you can see here, it's like a sun showing you that it's during the day. So you also get this view of like more what's, I'm not sure why 738 is still night, but <laughs> you, you kind of get that view of day versus night, which is also really nice, really nice feature. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay, any other questions? Okay, the next thing that I wanna talk about is automations. Now, I see a lot of people are on Google Sheets or Excel. They're literally running their entire business on Google Sheets or Excel. Like I've worked with multi-million dollar companies that are managing everything on Excel. And they move over to Monday, which is great, but what they're missing out is they're missing on the automations. And automations is a huge part of how you can save time and be more efficient and work smarter. Just to, to show you like the, the complete opposite, um, I actually, last month I had a client who, he, he was on the standard plan of Monday and the standard plan, you don't get a lot of automations. You get like 250 automations a month. And he was very hesitant to upgrade to the pro plan because he didn't want to pay the extra few dollars, which I totally understand. I know that tools cost money, but instead of paying the extra few dollars to upgrade to the pro plan, he hired a person and I'm not joking. He hired someone on a part-time salary to move items between groups. Okay. So just think about it. Instead of, instead of spending an extra $5 per user, and he only had three users, he hired someone part-time to, and I'm not, I'm really not joking. Like I was just like surprised and I'm like, use technology like we should be leveraging technology as much as we can and yes when you look at okay i have to pay an extra five dollars here and an extra ten dollars for this tool an extra ten, whatever it is but technology saves us time and we should be using that as opposed to things like that we don't need to waste our time like exactly with what this example that i was giving you with the onboarding just now I, yes, I could go and write all the onboarding tasks that I need to do for every single client. Every single time we, we get a new client, we have to add six new onboarding tasks, but there's no reason to do that. Take advantage of Monday's automations. Monday has like, you, you could do so much with it. Um, just to show you quickly, um, if you go into the automation center, so here's basically templates that Monday has. These are preset automations. There's just look through it to get ideas. Like I find that I just will spend time looking at it because I'll see a new automation or it, it'll spark some ideas about something that I want to do um, that can help automate. So I really would take the time to look at it. Um, two examples that I already touched on before was the Zoom example where you can integrate Zoom to Monday. So the information was there and the integration for Calendarly think about what tools you're using and then see if there's integrations if not you may need a third-party tool like make or zapier again maker I, I was in the same place because i was paying someone to enter all my calendarly links into monday okay i was paying her a couple of hours a month and then all of a sudden i'm like wait i could pay for make that's ten dollars a month and i'm not going to go over the ten the, the that plan instead of hiring someone for a couple of hours. Like th there's no comparison. So it's saving time, it's more efficient because you don't have human error. Um, so I, I really recommend looking at automations. I do literally every single board I create, I probably have an automation. When an item is created, set, um, set creation date to today because you want a creation date. You're working in a leads board. You know, you wanna know when a lead came in. There's so many different use cases where you need to know when things were created. Um, for billing, you want to know like, when did someone pay you or when did you have an expense? All of these things can be automated. When an item is completed, move it to the completed group. All of these things can be automated. There's so much, that's like a whole webinar on itself about automations, but there's really so much that you can do, um, to automate things, which again, will make your life so much easier. Like your work life, it will, it's, it's just easier. Okay, so the last thing that I wanna, um, the last strategy that I wanna talk about is dashboards. Um, dashboards are amazing within Monday. I think um, people don't use dashboards as much as they should because dashboards can be confusing. I will tell you that my experience with dashboard is dashboards is just testing it out. I, there's no secret sauce into, you know, I, I've learned a few things a, along the way, but it's just testing out what should be the Y and what should be the X, for example, in, in a chart. 
and you have this information. Like I'll give you an example of this sales dashboard. So this is pulling information from a leads board. Um, and again, this is all examples, but you can see here, we have the source of a lead. It's also once it goes to the contacts board, you can see that we have the source. Now, for me running my business, it's really important for me to know where my leads are coming from. So instead of spending the time, I don't even know how you would do this manually, but I can so easily see like, oh, look, 16% of my leads, of all of my leads came from Google. But last month, Instagram was actually the highest source of leads, okay? And this month so far, we could see paid Google and Instagram is tied. Like that information is so valuable for your company. And there's so much that you can do. Literally, I think like every week I build myself a new dashboard because I'm like, oh, now I want to learn this information or now I want to understand, you know, all that, how many leads I had 2023 versus 2024 or what's my gross profit 2023 versus whatever, whatever it is, learn how to use dashboards. I think that should be that that may be the, the topic of our web, next webinar because I think it's such a popular topic and you need this to run your business. You need the data. One of the things that I, I was talking about with my, my business coach that I was telling you about recently is he doesn't make any decisions that are not data driven, but you need that data. Like if you're running a business, <clears throat> you have data, you have to figure out a way how to pull that data in and dashboards are a great way to do it. So here's just one example of a sales dashboard that we have, and you can see tons of different information and just one other things. This is a whole financial module. Um, and you can see here that again, you have your expenses, expenses by month, different type of expenses type, different billing revenue, whatever. It doesn't matter what you're tracking, but if you need to track something, it's in figure out how to do it within the dashboards in Monday because it's there. Okay. So just to summarize really quickly, different ways that you can work smarter and not harder within Monday is setting up a task board making sure that you assign due dates, making sure you have a naming convention so you understand who's responsible for what, using views. I didn't cover just one other thing about views. You can also hide columns, so I would take advantage of that. Using formulas, set, looking at automations, and using dashboards. Those are the basic ways that I think that using Monday can help you work smarter and not harder. Um, now, I just want to... Um, offer one of the one of the things that our company does is we do sell these templates and as you can see here these were templates that i used for our sample um this is a, a product called organizer pro and um it's basically you can get up and running within monday in a very short amount of time it's very customizable it can be used for a lot of different different companies um no matter what your vertical is and we actually are having a discount um, for anyone that joined this webinar through the end of the month you save 20 percent on a on a purchase of organizer pro so if you would like to set up a live demo where we can walk you through exactly what's included what's in the boards um, we're going to add a link in the chat so that way you can um, sign up for a free demo and see what is part of our templates and I think that's it. So now the floor is open to any questions that anyone has. Can I just say the templates are ridiculous. They are absolutely worth whatever amount of money you got to spend for them. They are phenomenal and has helped me so much, especially with the automation and understanding how things work. Now, granted, I still have questions because I've got to make it for my business. But my gosh, it gave me such a head start in setting up this business. It phenomenal, just absolutely phenomenal. And now I'm through. I, I'm sorry, Tara, I keep taking thank you. No, thank you, Connie. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Thank you. No need to apologize. Thank you. Okay. Any questions about something that we discussed or a general Monday question? Um, any questions? Uh, Tara, there was uh, one question. Um, sure. How do you integrate time tracking uh, feature in the task management board? Probably person wanted to know the exact way how you do it. Sure. Okay. So let me, let me share my screen again. One second. Okay. So back to our task management board. So on a technical level, 
the way that you do it is we have a time tracking column. So I'll just show you technically how to do it. You just click this plus button and you search for time tracking and you add time tracking to your board. Now, um, basically, I'll just show you from over here from this one. Um, I want one that has time one second just to show you if you click on if you just click in this box so you can see when time was entered and by who. So you have like a summary of the time and it's broken down by each thing. If you want to manually enter it, you can. I will tell you that when I use this Batman and Robin setup, I actually have two different time tracking columns because each task, I want it to be very clear how much time Batman spends and how much time Robin spends. Because again, that's pulling in data about you know, the person doing the task versus like the project manager. And then I do a formula to add them up. So that way I know what I build the client basically. Um, but this is a time tracking column. And over here, this is a formula column where I have just pulled in time tracking by hours. So I have it in decimal because unfortunately Monday made a change a couple of months ago where you can't see the summary of the time tracking. So that's why I have a decimal column here. Um, so I can see the summary of basically this information. And then you can also pull this information into a dashboard. So if you want to see, um, if you want to see the information in a dashboard, you also can see like totals that people have spent on time. Does that answer whosoever question it was? I don't know if they're still here about time tracking. Okay. Any other questions? I actually might have one. Um, I just don't know if you can help me with that because basically um, I already use Monday uh, for the business that I'm part of. And um, so we created the board with the form itself and we can okay. request, you know, all the info from uh, potential, you know, customers that want to attend our event or webinar, whatever, whatever. And mm -hmm. um, we want to have the groups within the, t uh, the board, but also I want to have like a separate like task board with all the items and different um and different how would i call it like different tabs such as like i know that these ones that they, co they come from the um the form is like name surname contact number whatever and underneath i want to have my like task board let's say like contact this person this this person has to do something else do you know what i mean so i don't have to have multiple dash uh, boards opened i want to have okay. everything in the same uh, board yeah. So you're saying what? So you're saying one board is your right now. One board is your tasks, and then the other one is the people that you need to do them for. Do exactly. The I, would, I would like to have it all together because it's just it will be just easier. Right. I totally hear that. So you have two options. You either can have one board where, let's say, your form lives on that board, and you could have almost like their contact information with the tasks. Yeah. I'm not sure that that's the best way to go. I probably would have a separate contacts board, like where they fill in the information and then do a connected board column. So that way you can connect the people to the task because you probably will have a number of tasks per person. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I probably would do something like that. So I would have one board where the people fill in their information, like if they register for a webinar and then you can create tasks based on that and then do a connected board column where you can connect them. Okay, so the separate um, task board would have to, the yeah, dashboard, I know not the dashboard. I don't, I don't know how, I'm, how do I call it? I'm sorry, I'm still new to this. <laughs> All good, um, it's probably a separate task board. You would have one board called like contacts and one board called like tasks. Okay, okay, so I, I still have to create a completely new board for all the tasks that I want to do. Right? I would have, yeah, I, I think um, it makes more sense based on what you're saying to have a task board and a contacts board and then just connect them with the connected board column. Uh, because you know what I was thinking about, because as, you, um, as I see over here on your board, it says like main table, request form, dashboard, whatever. So what I did, I thought that if I click the, the plus button over there and I add a table, it will be a completely separate board or something that, I, that it will be all together. Yeah. But they are right, so it's not a it's not a separate board it's a separate view so technically yeah. you can have certain columns that would be like a contact like contact information and then the other ones would be the the main columns but 
because you're going to want to reuse the people associated with tasks, I wouldn't have, mm. I wouldn't have it on the same board. I would have it on two separate boards. Mm. Okay. Okay. So I have to go to my initial idea because I was like, okay, actually let's make it more smart. And it's not actually. Yes. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Sometimes um, it takes time until you figure out like, what's the best way. Like I literally, like I said, I'm changing my boards all the time. Cause like, I'll come up with these ideas like, oh, this would be more efficient. Like, let me do this th this way. Like, sometimes you just have to play with it um, until you see what works. Amazing. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, my pleasure. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so one thing um, I see someone said is, will there be a recording of this? Just just to let you know, will there be a recording? Yes, there will be a recording. We're going to send it. We're going to send it out. Um, Anything else? Any other questions? No? Okay. Well, Just thank you, everyone. Tara, what? thank you. Thank you so much. And waiting for the dashboard webinar. That, definitely <laughs> now I guess we have to do that one. Now I guess we have to do that one. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining. And have a great day. Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and remember to subscribe to receive tips and tricks on how to use monday.com. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.